If you were on US Route 20 heading northwest of the town of Bend, you would encounter two fascinating volcanic features. One of these features is part of a subglacial volcanic complex involving the flat-topped hog rock, which is a small-scale example of a toya that completely formed underneath a thick ice sheet approximately 80,000 years ago. Yet, since this and its neighboring Hayrick Butte toya to the south have not erupted since the end of the last ice age, this complex, which I will simply call the two toyas, would not be classified as active but rather dormant. The same, however, cannot be said of the second volcanic feature on this trip, a partially quarried cinder cone which has hues of reddish brown to it, being known as the Little Nash Crater. This cinder cone formed in a mildly explosive eruption in the year 50 CE, but was not alone when it erupted. As, at the same time Little Nash Cone was erupting, a second cinder cone and two hidden vents were also ejecting lava. And, if you go further south, you would encounter cinder cone after cinder cone which are suspiciously all aligned in a straight line. All of these vents, 42 in total in fact, of which 23 are cinder cones, are part of a little known fascinating volcanic field known as the Sand Mountain Volcanic Field. This volcanic field is active and is shown by its multiple eruptions and the last 10,000 years may one day erupt again. This sand mountain volcanic field stretches across a 5 mile wide and 8.5 mile long stretch of ground west and northwest of the extinct Mount Washington Shield volcano. Everything you see in this field completely formed in the last 10,000 years including the 76 square kilometers or 29.3 square miles its lava flows have covered during that time span. Almost all of the vents in the Sand Mountain field are constrained by a series of two northward trending lineaments representing what once were large magma dikes that intruded into the crust. Yet, of the 42 vents, there is a singular vent which stands out, being known as the Jack Pine Cone. As shown by how heavily vegetated this thinner cone is, it may not come as a surprise that Jack Pine is also the single oldest vent in the field. If it ever produced any lava flows, they are no longer visible as they were buried by subsequent eruptions from other vents. The Jack Pine vent formed in approximately 5000 BCE just after the Belknap Crater volcano produced an eruption to the south. This eruption began as a volume of unusual composition magma, aka basaltic trekkie andesite reached the surface and erupted in an explosive manner. The relevant magma was unusually gas and volatile rich due in part to its high viscosity, causing a violent Strombolian eruption to occur which may have lasted for one to two months. After this eruption ended, no further activity would occur for another 4,000 years. Then, during a time period of less than 40 years, the bulk of the volcanic field rapidly formed, involving more than a dozen cinder cones. We are currently unsure if these all erupted in a single prolonged year-long eruption or if they formed across 13 separate eruptions across several decades. I am assuming the former is correct, which occurred when a 5.9 mile long magma dike intruded into the crust. Initially, the entire length of the fissure erupted in 1000 BCE, which would have been a spectacular sight to behold. However, as time progressed, smaller portions of the fissure became dominant and these sites would become the site of future cinder cones. Because the area was heavily saturated with groundwater, the eruption which occurred was unusually explosive and ash-rich, even involving a subplinian phase at one point. Heavy ash emissions occurred as a result and by the time this eruption ended, 22 square miles were covered in basaltic and basaltic anisite lava and 0.2 cubic kilometers of ash had been ejected. This eruption seemingly created a secondary trend to the northwest which would be the site of Sand Mountain's most recent eruption in the year 50 CE. This 50 CE eruption was an order of magnitude less explosive than their prior sequence and through the construction of the Nash and Little Nash cinder cones covered 8.6 square miles in a layer of basaltic andesite lava. Due in part to how sparsely populated the immediate surrounding area is, the US Geological Survey designated the Sand Mountain Volcanic Field as a very low threat volcano. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.